welcome to Mind Brain Talks, the place where you find diverse and scientifically accurate information regarding psychology, neuropsychology, neurosciences and research methods every single week. My name is Bruno Faustino, I am a licensed clinical psychologist and neuropsychologist who's been working as a therapist, researcher and educator for the past few years. Here in Mind Brain Talks, I discussed and described different topics related to psychology and neurosciences and I try to explain them the best as I can for you to understand and for you to know something more about it. All videos here are just for educational purposes and it's not intended to diagnose any psychiatric condition or neurological disorder. So, without further delay, let's jump for today's content. So, this is the second video related to the theme uh, What is Neuropsychology? As we saw in the previous video, there are lots of different perspectives that were developed through uh, the centuries and were the fundamentals of the idea about how the brain may be the organ of the mind. In this video, we will expand the notion and we will see how it evolved from the center of the soul to be the center of the mind, the brain to be the center of the mind, and how it can be applied to different branches of neuropsychology. Of course, the scientific discipline of neuropsychology had evolved parallel with other scientific major branches, such as neurosciences, neurobiology, or even medicine. But now let's see how it evolved from earlier findings to the contemporary findings. So, now let's look to the manuals that I recommend to you today. The first one is the principles of neuropsychology. The second one is the fundamentals of human neuropsychology. The third is the neuropsychology handbook. The fourth is the clinical neuropsychology, the second edition from Jennifer Guard and John Marshall. The fifth is the neuropsychological assessment from, from Lezak. And the sixth is the Clinical Neuropsychology, a practical guide to assessment and management for clinicians. So now, let's continue the second part of the video dedicated to the history of neuropsychology. So, Franz Gall stated that the brain consists of a number of separate organs, each one responsible for basic psychological traits, such as courage and friendliness. Franz Gall stated that the brain would also be explored by its geography, which is the notion of the borders at the time when people were discovering and mapping new continents. So, Franz Gall applied the notion of geography to brain exploration. Gall's basic theory uh, defined it of localization of brain functions, which is called the science of phrenology, which is how the phrenology was born. Gall's basic theory of localization was called phrenology. A given brain area is enlarged, then the corresponding area of the skull will also be enlarged, which is the notion that the brain may have some specific geography. Gall's theory was based on this assumption. In the beginning of the 20th century, there were two major neuropsychologists that were very important to establish the idea of language and localization. These two major neuropsychologists are Broca and Wernicke. Let's look to their major contributions. So, before the 19th century, people knew little about the cortex and the brain. Scientific evidence supporting a localization position of different functions in the brain was not available till 1861. Paul Broca found that motor speech was specifically located in the posterior inferior region of the left frontal lobe. Broca was also the founder of French anthropology. This is quite a, a curious fact. Broca's landmark contribution was in the understanding of the origins of aphasia, which is a neuropsychological syndrome. In Paris, he was a professor of chirurgy, which contributed most to the advancing of the field of brain anatomy. Broca presented two clinical cases to support his proposal for the locus of speech. So, he stated that individuals who had excessive injuries involving different brain areas, such as left posterior frontal lobe, 
corresponding paralysis on the right side of motor speech deficits. Again, this is the idea of a contralateral organization of motor speech. But in other respects, they appear to be intelligent and normal. So Broca started to note that individuals who have motor speech deficits had intelligent or normal other mental functions, which is an evidence of differentiated brain functionings based on different localizations. A decade after Broca's discovery, Carl Wernick, another neuropsychologist that was very important to understand the speech phenomena, found that the understanding of speech was located in the superior posterior aspects of the temporal lobe, so a different area, a different brain area from motor speech production. So, Verdict noted that no motor deficit accompanied a loss of speech or comprehension caused by a damage in this area. Only the ability to understand speech was disruptive, which means that motor production of speech may be localized in different in a different area from speech comprehension. So this was very important in the advancement of cortical localization. And this cortical deficit was called vernic aphasia, which is a loss of speech comprehension caused by damage in the area of superior posterior aspects of temporal lobe. Another patient that was very important on the understanding of cortical localization of brain functioning was Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage was an American railroad worker who survived a massive accident where a large iron rod was driven completely through his head. This iron rod destroyed much of his brain's left frontal lobe and Phineas Gage had recovered from this accident. However, his family and his friends start to notice some modifications in his personality, which means that this could be related to destruction of specific brain area. Phineas Cage raised a number of issues and fostered a discussion in the 19th century about the brain localization of mental functions and fostered the debate between mind and brain interactions which was very important on the development of neuropsychology as a scientific field. Freud was also very important in the field of neuropsychology because he criticized the notion of localizationists. There were some uh, psychologists and some physicians that were critics of the cortical localization theory. Sigmund Freud criticizes Wernicke and Broca regarding localization of doctrine of aphasia. So, Freud stated that the Broca and Wernicke area centers are nodal points in a general and complicated network of neurons. He proposed that Broca's and Wernicke areas were not self-acting agencies and their significance was simply due to their anatomic localization. Distinction between the ability to recognize an object and inability to name it is called agnosia, which is also a term that was coined to Freud. So, Pierre Marie challenged Broca's findings by examining the preserved brains of the patients Broca had used to support his hypothesis of localization. Hermann Munch, experimental lesions in the association cortex of a dog produced temporary mind blindness. The animal could see objects but failed to recognize their significance. And Joseph Babinski introduced the term enosognosia which means no knowledge of the disease, introducing the phenomenon of an awareness on the understanding of diseases. So, individuals may have some brain impairment, but they are not aware of this impairment. So here we are seeing the fundamentals of a great debate that took place in the beginning of the 20th century, which was the discussion of localization theory against functional theory, or functionalization theory. So, on one hand, we have localization theorists, which state that brain functions are localized in specific areas in the brain, and the other theorist, the functional theorist, says that the brain functions, says that the mental functions are distributed through the entire brain. Now we have these two perspectives and we try to integrate them in a coherent manner to understand how individuals function and how individuals may have some lesions in different functions in different areas of the brain. So, 
This is also accompanied by the notion that neurons are the fundamental units of the nervous system. Heinrich Hartz emphasized a neuron theory, which is each nerve cell communicates with others through contiguity rather than continuity. He stated that the brain has neuronal unities and neurons are the cells of these unities. Also, he stated that there are some nerve fibers which are called the cell processes. One very important neuropsychologist in the 20th century was Luria. Luria developed a conceptual model of the brain functions where he defined three different major functional areas. He developed a conceptual model for understanding the organization of higher mental abilities or faculties and proposed that human behavior correlates with brain function. So, in his model, Luria developed three main conceptions about brain functioning. So, lower brain stem structures develop to maintain the tone and energy supply of the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex posterior to central circles or the fissure of Rolando are implying on the sensory impressions of visual, auditory and tactile nature and are identified, perceived and organized for comprehension. And three, the cerebral cortex anterior to or in front of the central sulcus are specialized on the production and monitoring of motor responses. So these were the main neuropsychologists that help neuropsychology to reach to its form today. So now let's look at different kinds of or different branches from neuropsychology. So we can find different sub areas here. Experimental Neuropsychology, Clinical Neuropsychology, Cognitive Neuropsychology, Forensic Neuropsychology and Educational Neuropsychology. Don't worry, in the future I will produce some videos talking about each one of these uh, subfields, okay? So, Clinical Neuropsychology is more focused on the assessment and rehabilitation on neurocognitive deficits caused by um, brain injury, brain diseases or brain malfunctioning. Forensic Neuropsychology is focused on the study on how brain behavior relationships may help to assess criminal issues and schools neuropsychologists is focused on how to foster neurocognitive processes related to learning and related to uh, the acquisition of school contents. So typically clinical neuropsychologists or neuropsychologists use standardized tests to assess different connections between brain functioning and behavioral actions. So standardized tests are used to link cognitive and behavioral performance to specific neurocognitive processes and neuropsychologists use individualized neuropsychology assessment to explore deficits and inform diagnosis. Standardization is known as the normative data, which allows comparisons between individuals who have brain deficits with individuals who do not have brain deficits. So, this is some types of scales that neuropsychologists tend to use, such as Vesher Memory Scale, Wisconsin Card Sorting Test, or the Bentham Visual Retention Test. So also, there are other methods that neuropsychologists use to explore the activity of brain functioning, which are functional magnetic resonance, magnetic resonance imaging, positron emission tomography, or computed axial tomography. Also, there are other projects that may foster neuropsychology as a field, which are animal brain models and artificial intelligence, or the use of electrophysiology, such as electroencephalography or magnetoencephalography. And neuropsychologists also use experimental tasks to measure reaction times and accuracy to explore performance in these same tasks. So, what is important to know is that neuropsychology has lots of major con So, what is important to know at So, what is important to know is that neuropsychology is a scientific field that studies the relationship between brain behavior and uh, cognition and starts to understand how the brain functioning impacts on neurocognitive processes and how neurocognitive processes impact on overt behavior. 
So this is a very important notion to have about the scientific purpose of neuropsychology. And now let's just summarize the contents of today. So in the beginning of the century there was a great debate between localization and cerebral function, which was very important to the development of new ideas and new concepts and new empirical findings regarding the connection between cognition, brain and behavior. Broca and Wernick were very important on the idea of the localization of the uh, motor speech production and speech comprehension. Uh, and this was an integrated model to understand the brain function, how the brain works over within the speech phenomenon. Also, and actually, neuropsychology has different sub areas and has different methods of research. Well, it's all for today. Don't forget to see this video description regarding today's theme to see the manuals and the books that I use to develop a video like this. Also, if you like what I'm doing here, please consider to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications, which is very important to support my channel. Also, you can give a comment to express your mind and to express your thoughts and to say something about the themes that you've heard here today. Welcome to Mind Brain Talks, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!